Hi everybody, Tom Andrews with uh, Win Without War and New Security Action here with Matt Ho. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Matt is, as most of you know, uh, served in Iraq as a uh, Marine captain mm -hmm. and then went on to Afghanistan to um, serve in the, uh, in the State Department. Uh, uh, as a political officer Correct. Uh, in uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, resigned his position in Afghanistan because of his view that it just simply wasn't working uh, and he could no longer uh, be associated with that strategy. And, and Matt, I want to talk about what has happened uh, here in Washington, D.C. over the last few days. We had the, the WikiLeaks the release of all of these uh, previously classified documents and then right on the heels of that was a vote on the supplemental appropriation for Afghanistan. 114 total votes against the supplemental, but what was noteworthy is that, at least in the Democratic caucus, it went from 32 opposing the supplemental last year to 102 uh, opposing the supplemental this year. But let's talk about some of the interesting uh, parts of that WikiLeaks uh, release. Mm -hmm. uh, governance, for example. You had a civilian uh, uh, officer uh, talking about uh, the U.S. Civil Affairs Office uh, that deals with the insurgency, and, and, they, and they said this, the people of Afghanistan keep losing their trust in the government because of the high amount of corrupted government officials. The general view of the Afghans is that the current government is worse than the Taliban. How can any counterinsurgency strategy prevail if uh, significant numbers of people believe the government is corrupt so corrupt that they, even though they don't like the Taliban, they think the Taliban is better than the government. You know, I, I, in that article, or that, that, that report, I think was from 2007, I right. believe. So that's that was right. three that's years right. ago, that's so right. this is not a, a, a case of, of it, it's new, or it, it, it's, it's uh, uh, things have changed since then, because they haven't. If anything, things have gotten worse. You hear more and more reports of, uh, of people upset with the Afghan government because, uh, because it's corrupt, and because of the way it's structured, it's very centralized. So if you're not within that clique that governs it, yeah. you're outside of it, you're excluded from it. So you've got two issues with the government. It, it, it's, it's incredibly corrupt and it's, uh, it's exclusive. Uh, it's composed of many, most of the Afghans in the South and the East where we're fighting, uh, who are fighting us, um, are doing so because of, uh, they are fighting a, a corrupt and unrepresentative government. Uh, they see themselves being intruded upon by outsiders. Uh, yes, there are other Afghans, but they're they're outsiders. They're, they're they're not from those areas. And what this basically tells us, or basically shows to us, is that our, we're entangled in a civil war. It's somebody else's civil war. Afghanistan is it's very complex. It's divided upon uh, different ethnic and regional lines. But we're helping one side try and subjugate the other. So we've seen uh, the movement in Congress among Democrats go from 32 to 102. And then right after the vote happened, this is very interesting, the chairman of the Subcommittee on Defense, uh, Norm Dix, who is in line to be the next chairman of the entire Appropriations mm -hmm. Committee if the Democrats uh, keep hold of the House, he said, look, okay, we voted for this, but he told reporters that uh, if it looks like that corruption uh, remains, if, he, if it looks like there's a lack of governance uh, in the provinces, um, if, if, if nobody's doing anything about the, the, the drug production, um, then it's going to be even more difficult uh, in the future. So those are the, the, the fault lines that he indicated. So let's just, let's just talk about that. Okay, uh, there's, there's corruption, but is there any hope at all that corruption is being reduced? That when we have to vote on this, when the Congress votes on this again, that the administration come back and say, okay, well, there's still a problem, but it's being reduced. Any evidence of progress when it comes to corruption in the Afghanistan government? Uh, not that I can see, and not that, that any independent body or, or even any U.S. government agency uh, can find. Uh, the more money we pump in there, the more money that's, that's going to line the pockets of corrupt government officials, and, and there constantly seems to be a stream of either uh, audits or, or reports done by either U.S. government agencies or international organizations, or reports from the media, like the report we had in the Wall Street Journal at the beginning of, this, of, of, of July uh, that, that cited how but, you know, over a billion dollars a year is flown out of Kabul airport into banks in Dubai, into buy condos in Dubai, and other things by corrupt Afghan government officials. It'd be as if uh, myself, a guy from New Jersey, uh, in, in uh, 2005, the federal government puts me in charge of a parish in southern Louisiana after Katrina, 
and then I take all the FEMA money and send it back to my buddies in New Jersey. Right. Um, same type of thing. And is there any strategy in place to try to reduce the corruption? Is there any even uh, attempt to, 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 to drive this, uh, this factor in the we have, uh, we do, we have uh, The U.S. government through the U.S. Embassy uh, has uh, officials over there, uh, Department of Justice officials, uh, attorneys from other fields who are supposedly on these anti-corruption task forces that are supposedly helping the cars our government work through this issue. But, you know, you only have a, the, the cars our government has to be a willing participant in this. Right. And so as long as you have a conflict going on where the future is uncertain, um, and as long as you're flooding the country with so much money uh, that you'd be crazy after, after a period of 35 years of civil war, that you'd be crazy not to lie in your pockets because all you're doing is trying to survive. As long as you have those two factors going on, I don't see how the corruption abates or how the corruption diminishes. Um, it's just going to continue to, 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 to go. Uh, one other thing I'd like to get back to what you said uh, with, with, with uh, Norm Dix. The other issue, too, uh, in terms of uh, you talk about governance and the training of the army and the poppies and so forth, but uh, you have to look at the combat as well. The combat is getting worse and worse every month. I think we're at 59 Americans killed for the month of July. Right. We still have four or five days left to go. We right. will have another record. Right. Uh, I think every this, month, every is month as a direct, I think it's record. I think it's 23 of the last 25 months have been record highs. Right. Uh, we're, the American soldier is not losing on the battlefield. Uh, you know, tactically, we're not losing battles on the battlefield, but we are not winning. And as long as we continue with this strategy, uh, all we will have is a status quo. Matt, another benchmark of success for members of Congress, the chairman of the Senate uh, Armed Services Committee, Carl Levin, says that a key objective is building up the Afghan army so that so we can then hand over security to the Afghan army. Uh, report in today's Associated Press, uh, very disturbing when it when it went into the makeup of the of the of the Afghan army and what it means. Let me just quote you uh, here: In southern Afghanistan, the focus of the U.S. war effort, nearly all of the Afghan soldiers are foreigners too. Most don't even speak the local language. They have to communicate through interpreters hired for the Americans. So what this is saying is that in the eyes of these uh, Afghans who live in the south, rural Pashtuns. Um, the Afghan army is seen as much as a foreign occupying army as the American army. Mm -hmm. is, is this correct? That's absolutely correct. And you'd see that, uh, I saw it both in the east and southern Afghanistan where uh, the Afghan security forces and the Afghan central government as well uh, were seen as outsiders. Cool. Uh, same thing with the enlisted because you can, you can tell the difference between uh, those from the south and those from say the west and the east uh, just in terms of uh, facial hair. Uh, most of the southern Afghans, the real Pashtuns, will have beards, while many of the uh, Tajiks or Uzbeks or Hazaras or Pashtuns from the north and the west or from urban areas will be uh, I, will not have beards, will have mustaches or beards. So you can just see, uh, see the differences, plus the fact that they don't speak the same language. They couldn't communicate. And the way the villagers and the people of southern Afghanistan treated them, they were scared of them, they treated them with resentment. Uh, they looked uh, skew at them. The, uh, the American soldiers were respected way more than the Afghan army soldiers on many occasions. Uh, American soldiers also tend to hold themselves to much higher standards than the Afghan army. Uh, Afghan army is, is, is uh, there's a lot of looting, there's a lot of, uh, of, of all those terrible things that happen in war where one side is dominating the other. Uh, you would see occurring, but it is it, 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 this quota system. Um, I, I it, that that will be the response from our administration, from our military, from the Afghan government. However, when you're there on the ground, you don't see it. So and even this, if the AP story seems to, to bear that out as well, uh, she says that in there that the quota system doesn't really exist. So even if they uh, say, look, we're making progress because we've now trained more uh, Afghan uh, army soldiers. They're now at this level yeah. of strength, therefore we're that much closer to being able to hand this off. In fact, um, those soldiers that are being trained, those soldiers that are coming into the force could be just as much as an uh, seen as just as much of an occupying foreign uh, army as our soldiers. Absolutely, they're seen as outsiders. Okay. So, seen as outsiders. so the trend lines, the, the uh, training and, and, and taking responsibility and giving it more to the, uh, the army of Afghanistan. Uh, having uh, better provincial governance uh, and ending uh, corruption. All of those three criteria, critical to success, uh, the trend lines, 
are not going in the right direction. No, absolutely not. And, and I, I think if if, if 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 anyone who's watching this just wants to do some sim simple Google term uh, searches and look up news articles for the last four or five years and get a sampling of it, you'll see it's the reporting has been consistent on this. It's not going well. It's been going it's been going poorly. We're not making progress. Uh, if you look at the number of troops we've sent, and look at the amount of money we're spending there. The United States has spent over $50 billion developing the security forces as well as developing Afghan government institutions and building roads, bridges, schools, doing vocational training. And where have we seen success because of those efforts? Uh, the conflict has only increased. Casualties are on the increase uh, at record totals every month. Uh, and the support for the central government in the south and the east is not bearing out. Um, so, uh, folks watching and folks paying attention to Afghanistan need to, to realize that we've been doing the same thing there for five years now, roughly, in terms of a counterinsurgency strategy with both military and, 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 and development arms uh, of it, and it's not getting us anywhere. It's actually making things worse. Bad news, $33 billion more appropriated uh, yesterday by the House of Representatives, uh, concurring with the Senate, going to the White House today to be signed. Uh, the good news is is that we've gone from 32 uh, Democrats opposed to this to 102 Democrats opposed to it. Uh, so there's hope. Uh, stay tuned for the next vote on the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. This time, 157.8 billion dollars that'll be in the next uh, appropriations bill for uh, uh, for our uh, armed services. That's coming up in the fall. Matt Ho, thanks so much. Thanks, Tom. Great to have you.